What is up, YouTube? Okay, right, we're coming to the end of a very long day recording. Um, I've just done four hours of Bash videos that I'm really excited uh, that are going to be released uh, over the coming week. Um, but today, and this last video of the day, I'm going to just continue with the Git series because it was basically requested so much in the comments. Um, this is probably now part five, I think, of our Git series. Um, and in this video, I want to have a look at Git hooks. Um, so what are Git hooks? So when you do a Git commit or a Git push or a Git merge in Git, obviously, um, you can trigger something called a hook. And a hook is basically like an action uh, that takes place and it fires off um, a script or even a set of commands or um, you know whatever it is you want to have happen uh, that can help prepare your code or improve the quality of your code or do automated tasks for you. And there's uh, local hooks and there's remote hooks. In this video, we're going to have a look at local hooks. If that sounds like something you're interested in, then let's get to the terminal. Okay, so I'm here in the terminal. What I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to show you um, the sample hooks that come with Git. And these are written in Bash uh, for the most part. And we're going to have one of those hooks be triggered. And then I'm going to have another example. I'm going to show you one of my um, Git hooks that I use when I'm doing my Python projects. Okay, So uh, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to create a, a repository. And we're going to call this uh, Bash Proof of Concept, like so. Um, we haven't actually uh, created it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do a uh, make directory like that. And I'm going to use the um, little symbol like that to make directory for the last command. And I'm going to do CD. And I'm going to do that as well to go into that as well. So obviously the mistake is obviously um, uh, turned into a bit of a lesson. <laughs> okay, so uh, sorry about this. I have, I have been doing so many bash videos today. Um, I am a little bit tired and I haven't even turned my camera. Okay, so now I'm going to initialize my Git uh, repository. I'm just going to do Git in it like so. I've initialized my repository. Um, now, if I do a Git status, I've got to see I've got my README file. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look inside this um, this this dot Git folder and have a look at the magic uh, goodness of these Git hooks. So, if I just go into this folder like so and do a long listing for you. You can see here that we've got a hooks folder. Now inside here, there's going to be some sample hooks that we're going to have a look at first, and then we're going to make our own hook in, uh, well, we're going to make our own hook to um, uh, use against some Python uh, code. So let's have a quick look in this directory, and we'll do another long listing like so. And we can see here some names that will probably make a lot of sense uh, to people who are familiar with Git. So you can see here we've got a pre-commit sample, uh, you know, pre-merge commit. And these are obviously actions that are going to be triggered um, when we do things on the command line. Um, if I take this pre-commit sample, this is a really simple, quick one to have a look at. And we just uh, cut that out. This basically checks that we've got non, uh, that we have got no non-ASCII characters inside our uh, file system. So we're going to test this one out now. And how we're going to test this is we're going to basically rename the file. So if I just take the pre-commit uh, sample and I rename it to pre-commit, this is now active on our, our, our project, basically. So if I just do CD back, like so, I'm now going to make another file, and this file will go um, echo uh, test, and we'll call this one uh, test. And if I just um, take off of my terminal uh, a glyph and just paste that there like so, um, obviously that's a non-ASCII um, file name. So I'm just going to make that like that. If it goes git status, uh, you can see that we've got um, our Unicode glyph inside our file name. I'm just going to control the uh, screen, control L, uh, do git add to add all. I'm now going to do a git permit, and I'll, I'll put a message on it. You haven't got to put a message in this case to fire it off, but I'm going to put a message on it. Uh, this will error. And you can see it has actually errored. So it's attempt to add a non-ASCII file name. And it's basically explains to us that this is not a good look um, if we're going to be working with multiple developers. So um, it's as simple as that to create a really basic hook. We can go into the samples. We can have a play with them. Um, they are written in Bash. They're good to go for the most part. Um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at two different um, uh, things. We're going to have a look at how we can ignore uh, the Git hooks. And then we're going to have a look at how to uh, implement a more 
a thorough Python um, hook that's going to actually like, do some cleansing, do some linting, do some formatting of our code, okay? So let's go back to that terminal. Now, the first thing you can see here is um, there's a git config um, that we can set. So this git config uh, will actually, um, it's, well, we're going to be setting on the hooks and it will allow non-ASCII as true. So it'll override that git uh, hook. So if we go back into the git hooks and we uh, cut out the uh, pre-commit sample, like so, if you go up to the top somewhere here, um, you can see here that we're looking for this hooks allow non-ASCII basically inside the git sample. So if that was set, this would be um, ignored. Now, another way we can do this is actually when we're doing the uh, commit itself. So if I go back uh, to here, um, what we can actually do is do git commit, but this time we can do a no uh, verify. I can spell it right, there you go. I do a no verify, and that's basically going to um, bypass, if you like, the, the check. So if I do that now, no verify, we've gone straight into the message. And you can see it's going to let us push up a file with that in the file name. So that's a quick example of a bash um, pre-commit hook. Now we're going to have a look at a Python one. So I'm going to exit out of this. I'm actually going to uh, CD back out of this directory. I'm now going to go make a new directory, and we'll call this uh, Python proof of concept, like so, and we'll CD into that directory like that. Um, so now in this directory, um, we're going to do a little bit of work to make a, a really useful hook. And um, I'm going to do a bit of paste and some code in here. So I'll have to link to these files, maybe in a gist or something underneath uh, the description of this video. Now, if you've been following along um, with my other videos, um, during the Python video, uh, you notice we made a virtualized environment to keep all of our PIP modules. Um, this next module is one of the few modules that I actually don't mind being installed globally because it's so commonly used and it's so uh, valuable to us. Uh, but if you haven't got it, you'd have to uh, install it. So um, what you would do is you'd PIP, uh, PIP3 in my case here, and we install pre-commit like so. Now in my case, it's actually already installed, but if you haven't got it already installed, um, you would have to have it installed now. Okay, so um, that's the first step. The second step is we need a pre-commit config.yaml file, which is a hidden file that we're keeping the root of our directory. Now, uh, because I use this file so often, I've actually got one that I'm gonna use for this project. So I'm gonna do copy uh, root, um, in my templates, and it's got pre-commit config YAML. I'm going to copy that here, and we're going to have a quick look at it, like so. And you can see this is going to um, do a number of things here, um, but we've got inside here, we've got checking of things like, you know, um, check for YAML, end of file fixer, trade in white space, and you can see it's going to actually do a number of different things for us, including auto, pep8, and flake8, on our files. Okay, so um, our next step now is to initialize a Git repository, uh, like so. So we've initialized a repository. Um, we're gonna do a Git add, and we're gonna add everything in that repository, which will be the, the file that we just looked at. Uh, now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually install uh, using the pre-commit command, so pre commit like so, and go install. So we've installed our uh, git hooks and pre-commit. So if we went into the same directory that we saw uh, when we looked at the bash, you'll see that we have, let's just do a long list in, you'll see that we have the original bash sample file, uh, but that pre-commit install is created as another file uh, here. And if we look at that one, like so, we can see it's actually different um, to the to the bash hook that we had before. So we're just gonna go back out of here and go back into our root. We've now installed the pip module. Uh, we've copied our, uh, our format in our, our YAML um, uh, configuration, and we've also got the hook in place. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put some, uh, some dirty Python code in place, and then we're gonna test out our hook. So if I just commit um, this first, so um, like that, okay. You can see already um, that a number of checks have been done to this uh, to this repository, if you like, okay. Now, there's no files to check that are Python. However, we have passed a number of things here with like the trim 
trade in white space and fix end of files. So if I'm just gonna now uh, go into this directory, do a control L to clear it. So now um, we're gonna create a file. So let's just create a Python file here. And let's just call this uh, bad code. I mean, it's not gonna be that bad code, but let's just do something like, um, let's define a function. Let's do something like add uh, numbers, add numbers like that, um, A, let's do B. So we've got a function. Um, we haven't got a doc string in here. We haven't got a shebang in here. And then let's do something like um, return, and we'll just do return uh, A plus uh, B. And then here, uh, we'll do the result. And the result's gonna be equal to add numbers, and we'll just make it, I don't know, four and five. Ah, my recording's still good, excellent. And then we'll just print um, like this, and we'll say, um, let's just say um, the result is but we're not actually going to use the result so that'll probably get flagged um, there's also not a doc string in here or shebang and stuff um, so um, yeah I mean that'll, that'll be good enough for our bad code okay so let's just do that and save that so now uh, we'll do a git status we've got our bad code let's do a git add to add everything and now we'll do a git commit um, bad code like so and now you can see we've got a number of failures on our code and this has all been done for us in an automated fashion and you can see now it's telling us what the problems are so that essentially is the power of git hooks um, we will have a look at more hooks in future videos and we'll also look at hooks on the remote host um, if you like this kind of stuff if you want me to keep going with the git if you want me to keep going with the python or you want me to keep going with the bash videos um, just let me know in the comments. Um, I'll try and get to all these topics. And I also want to do PowerShell, C Sharp, you guys, and also um, a little bit of Ruby and Lua. Um, but for now, um, I hopefully uh, that's going to help you. Um, any specific requests, obviously put in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching. It's been a long day recording uh, Bash videos for you guys. Um, hope, hope you're loving it. Hit subscribe, all that goodness. Uh, till tomorrow.